Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment of The Letter. We got our own little spooky situation, but I guess life moves on. The rest of the day slips away in a blur. Despite my best efforts in keeping this morning's events from surfacing in my mind, it sticks. In a way, everything today feels simply like a reminder. Every conversation, regardless of how casual, every topic, no matter how mundane it seems. I blame the news entirely for this. Recent happenings brought quite a few interesting stories to everyone's attention, mostly superstitious talk of death. And when locals talk about death here, anyone can sure as hell count on someone bringing up that mansion Isabella sold not a few weeks ago. Even my own students won't stop yapping about it. I think it's even worse than when it was put back up in the market. Now there are more stories. If this is the world reminding me of what matters, or simply because the atmosphere around this time of the year calls for it, I'd rather take the latter. At least then, I can be sure people will forget about it in favor of another set of holidays after. Nevertheless, and this may be a painful thing to admit, but listening to them is a pleasant distraction while waiting for Ashton's call. I hope he didn't forget, the school day is about to end soon. No, that's got nothing with what I heard. You always hear stuff. I'm not sure if half of them's even real. No, really. Rowan knows about it. He used to be in the same class with them. I can hear you from back here, you know. Oh, so you do have a voice. Whatever, Rowan. Anyway, the story goes like this. There were three of them. They entered the mansion on a dare, and they were all never seen again. Is this the video we saw of the three kids? No one knows what happened to them. Up to this day. Some say they could be anywhere right now, standing right behind you. Scary shit, man. Cock and bull story. Calling it now. No, you don't get it. Why don't you ask Miss Gales then? Better yet, why don't you go inside the place? I'm betting my allowance you can't do it. Their talk immediately halts when I look up, all of them suddenly pretending to be engrossed in their current activity. Still, a word to put a stopper to this nonsense is needed. Creativity and imagination fostered by these stories is one thing, but reckless ideas should be corrected before anything potentially tragic comes from it. Back to your worksheets, everyone. And I don't want to hear any talk of dares or going inside that mansion. It's private property now. Actually, even before an owner took it over, wasn't it always private property, just unoccupied? You'd all better stay away from it before... Oh? At the noise, the whole lot of them go silent. You can almost hear a pin drop. The look on their faces would have made for a funny picture, but that's irrelevant at the moment. I don't even know why I told you. If that is a student loitering around, someone's going to be in trouble. I'll be back. If you're done, you can leave your worksheets on my desk. Keep the noise to a minimum while I'm gone, okay? I can sense their eyes on me as I walk out the door. A muted kind of anticipation. A bit unnerving, but it's far more agreeable than the feeling of being watched I've been enduring these past few days, even though we're literally being watched right now. Class is still in session for most of the rooms. In a few hours, once the final bell rings, however, this place will once again be filled with busy chatter and footfalls, an everyday cycle in itself. But for the moment, I let the silence guide me, my ears focusing on whatever sounds there are or... Eh, you don't need the extra there. There are or will be. Searching for that distinct clanging of metal. A good minute passes, and for the portion of it, only my steps echo through the halls. And another. I'm about to turn around when... That is pretty... It was, is somebody stuffed in a locker? These are too small for that, based on the visuals, right? These are like half lockers? The sound of it halts my footsteps. It's a little muffled and infrequent, but grows louder after each interval. With the hallway devoid of people, if I don't put a stop to it soon, it'll start to disturb the other classes still going on. This ghost gets around. What is going on with this thing? Looking for it doesn't take long. All I do is follow the racket, and shortly, I'm standing in front of a nondescript row of unoccupied lockers. A cat jumps out and jump scares me, and then I turn around and go, man, that sure was silly, and then a body falls out of a nearby larger locker and really scares me. And from the inside of one of them, sitting in the middle, comes the noise. Annoyingly disruptive, now that I'm facing it. Like someone's pounding on the metal door from the inside, hoping to get out. Leaning forward, I try to get a glimpse of the horizontal slats of whatever's causing it. Oh yeah? But in this light, only darkness greets me. And another round of clanging. 
So what, the darkness greets the other end of clanging? Ha 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 ha. Louder than, louder, <laughs> louder than previous one. Louder than the previous one. More desperate. I've heard stories before. From other schools, from a few colleagues who had to deal with it once or twice, from the White Day remake. Although, personally, I've never encountered one myself, and I can only thank the heavens I haven't. Yet. But. If this is another kid, some other student stuffed in a locker. I mean, I was joking. These are small lockers. Like, you gotta really, like, fold a kid to get him in here. Nobody's doing that in this school. <laughs> with a huff, I straighten up and study it briefly with a frown. Without delay, I reach for its handle. Even though it's locked? It's a locker? Go to the office and find out whose locker it is, and then go find that kid. And... At once, it stops. Immediately replaced by the muffled sound of a mobile phone ringing. Huh. Are we changing scares, or... Did the ghost not want to throw out my call, or what? I give the door a few raps before taking my attention away. A second. Another. When nothing or no one responds, I finally avert my eyes and I pull out my mobile. And that's when it strikes! Every time they break out a phone, it startles me a little bit. They really whip that phone out in the visual. That came up so fast. Ashton's voice greets me from the other end of the line, oddly cheerful in light of this morning's matters. Or maybe because I'm just expecting some grave or serious news from him. Instead, I get this. Hey, Becca. Well, you sound happy. I do? My voice still sounds the same to me. There are only two things I know of that could be the reason for that tone. Sweets, or he's gotten a good lead in his case. I mean, we're obviously rooting for Ash to do well, but come on, sweets! From the sound of it, I'm going to assume it's the former. Oh, since lately that case is all that's running inside his head. If there's ever a third one, I've never heard of it. Yet. It can only be one of the two. Ignore that. How's Isabella? Go home a few minutes ago. I think she's sleeping now. Okay, this is after Zachary's place. Sorry this took a while. Z-Man gave us the puppy eyes after we tried to leave. Had some food prepared for us, apparently. We didn't have the heart to say no. I mean, Isabella literally stopped you in your tracks. That's alright. Is she okay now? I... I'm not really sure. She didn't say anything to Zach, but she mentioned a plan to take a few days off from work. It was a passing comment before I left her, so I didn't get to ask. Must be because of Rose's death. Could be? It doesn't seem like it from Zach's story, though. He said she was shaking when she got there. Shaking? The word triggers a memory. Uh, what, of our own hands from the car earlier? From three days ago on the way home from her little treat after she sold the mansion, yep. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I won't lie, it scared me. The terrified look on her face, how she sounded when she suddenly screamed. Becca? Still there? Yeah, I... I just remembered something. Sorry, don't mind me. Okay, so not our own ghost story, but Isabella's other ghost story. Look, if you can talk to her, get the story out of her. That would be great. She wouldn't talk to Zach or me even when I tried. Maybe she'll speak up if it's you? I'll give it a go, but I can't promise anything, okay? You know how stubborn she can get. But thanks for letting me know about this. If you want, I can get you that ice cream thing you mentioned. Tonight? As thanks. Just as thanks for all the trouble I've caused today. Believe me, I'd love to take you up on that offer, but I've got something on my sked this evening. Maybe some other time? My sked? Come on. Thanks a lot, Becca. There's a short pause before he cuts the call from his end, and once again I'm alone with my thoughts. And then the knocking resumes, because it detects that I'm done with my call and it didn't want it to interrupt. It's a surprisingly polite ghost, considering what a petty dick it is all the time. But rather than answers, all I got from it are questions. More of them, one on top of the other, as if the world isn't planning to give me a break anytime soon. But that's a problem I'll tackle later. Right now, I've got students who need to be taught follies of eavesdropping if the slightly open door and their smothered laughter from inside is an indication. Did I only walk one foot out from the room? Is the locker that close? Alright, enough eavesdropping. All of you, back to your seats. Is that your boyfriend, Miss Gales? The, this voice, it sounds like Kylie's voice actor, like, holding her nose or something. Isn't that your boyfriend? None of your business! He totally is. 
A quick scuffle follows that comment. Scuffle? What do I, like, beat them up? <laughs> if there's a retort prepared at the tip of my tongue, I'd drop every pretense of letting it loose on them. There's no use arguing with teenagers sometimes, boisterous as they all are. They're still my kids, though. Rough around the edges, maybe, but still my kids. Shaking my head, I head back to my classroom with a smile, but not before taking a glance at the locker again. It hasn't made a sound since. Which means... I cured it. I am an exorcist. Must be the wind. You only get to say that when, like, the window rattles or the house creaks. You don't say that about pounding coming from inside a specific locker. Get the hell out of here. So, without another look, I leave it alone. But then a completely different locker, closer, pounds. And then a completely different locker, closer, pounds. What? I was actually considering making a joke about the shining with the elevators, with the blood flowing out. This isn't quite that, but it's closer than I thought. Wait, did we not see that then? So that wasn't a, a scare for us? That Did that really happen then if we can't see it? What the hell was that? I don't even know what that means. We've gotten all sorts of hallucinations. Is there someone dead in three lockers? If Becca didn't see it, then it was meaningless. What even was that? Was that for me, the player? What, what was that? But oh well. All in all, the entire school day ends without a hitch. The blood was for the ghost's personal amusement, I guess. I don't know. It could have gone better, mind you, but with the exams nearing, getting out of work before the sun has set looks as though it's a far-off dream for now. At least until they're over, then we have the holidays to look forward to. There really are times when you simply take what you can get for the time being. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, that, that background sound. I was like, oh, is it getting ominous? But I think that was just a car. All I'm hoping for is this will continue until the whole day ends. There's still that promise I made to Ashton, and frankly, the idea alone doesn't sound good. If Isabella didn't talk to them, what makes them think she'll talk to me? It's not like there's a hierarchy, is there? Just because I can handle Isabella's childish tendencies doesn't mean I can do it all the time. Really? Those two give me too much credit. Nevertheless, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Was that whole thing a noun? It's hyphen? Hey, look at this, everybody. I have my fingers crossed. Have you seen my fingers crossed before? If only because I'm also worried about her. And both Zachary and Ashton deem it important that somebody get the story out of her. Here's to hoping it's got nothing to do with that letter. Again. I understand if she feels a bit stressed lately, but keeping that story going on for more than a week is... Hmm. <laughs> it's bound to get tiring at one point. Even though I saw a spooky ghost, if Isabella describes the ghost, that might help. Seriously, I merely don't want this to end in another argument. God willing, the cafe special will help smoothen things out. After all, it's always been food with her. Or money. But mostly food. <laughs> Hey, we're back. At this hour, the cafe is usually filled to the brim with people. That's the reason Isabella and I rarely ever go here during the evenings. It's simply too much of a hassle when we can prepare food ourselves in the comfort of our homes, and there really isn't much reason to eat out lately. What with life going on a busy streak? No time for long lines, better spend that doing something productive, yes? Lucky there isn't one tonight. Only few people? Eh, only a few people are idling around the counter. Four of them, in fact. A woman in her 60s and a teenager busy with his phone. Both are just waiting to be served their orders. That sounds like two of them. Are we going to keep going? Aha, what? The other two, a po Oh, wait, no, he, he's her uncle, right? The other two, a posh-looking man and a child, who I immediately recognize as Kylie, appear to have not yet picked anything they want. For some reason, my stare lingers at the guy. Though dressed relatively well and looks harmless, I haven't seen him around these parts before. Someone new in the neighborhood, perhaps? Even so, there's something familiar in him. It feels like I've seen him somewhere before. That also begs the question, no, it raises the question, of why Kylie is with him. Begging the question would be like, boy, that sure is weird. Wait for you to ask what I'm talking about. Of course, the girl easily takes a liking to anyone who buys her sweets, so it's both a bit worrisome and unsurprising. The blonde bloke doesn't look particularly thrilled with the company, though. Yeah, I'll bet he isn't. I tear my eyes away from them soon enough once the guy at the counter appears, ready to take my order. That, and I'd also hate to be accused of ogling strangers. Two, evening special, take out. He's already punching the order before I even finish. Saying my order out loud is really more for formality's sake and made out of habit. 
He has known Isabella and me long enough that if we ever drop by here, he already knows it's always because I'm buying dinner for the two of us. I rarely visit here alone if I can help it, but Isabella can sometimes be a bad influence. He gives me a small smile before leaving to prepare my order while I fish for my wallet, when... Look, you little ankle biter. If I buy you the biggest parfait they have, will you please, please behave? Ah, uh, no, 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 man. Rookie mistake. We tried that. You don't want to get her too big of a parfait or her stomach will hurt and it'll be bad for her. You gotta get her a small parfait. I would just like five... No. Ten minutes of peace and quiet. We could probably pick Kylie up. Luke will love us for that. You said you'll get me some bread pudding this time. Yeah, well, darling, they said they ran out of it. Just pick another one so we can be on our way. I know this guy's a major asshole to everybody, but like... This is basically the same attitude, but you can kind of tell he's trying to hold back a little bit. Like, well, darling, there's, there's something that's just a little amusing to me about that. That parfait doesn't look as cute as the one my mom bought me. Parfait is just ice cream, sweetheart. It'll melt no matter how dainty it appears. In the end, it'll all look like an ugly puddle. Again, that second sentence, it'll melt no matter how dainty it appears. Like he's, oh man, this guy. Now come on, just pick one. It could even be the most expensive one on that list. I don't give a shit. Care, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if he would care about that. That's, that's amusing. I don't give a hoot. Mm. Oh, what I would give for someone to buy you off my hands right now. Well, this is perfect, right? What? My whole attention instantly snaps back to them in their conversation. Jumping to conclusions isn't something I'm particularly fond of, especially when all I have are baseless assumptions, but you can't really trust a stranger these days. No one around the cafe seems to have noticed his words either. Very suspicious words. Yeah, but this isn't stranger danger, this is just like an asshole relative who doesn't want to be out right now. Still, I don't move. Yet. But my hand has already shifted from my wallet to the book I'm carrying. Oh yeah, the big heavy history book! A hardbound textbook. Looks harmless, but if a situation calls for it, it might be a good, deadly weapon. I'll throw the book at you! Might. I haven't gotten the chance to try it anywhere so far. Today could be the day. But you promised! Look, if you don't want a parfait, how about... How about a Bonifee pie? I'm sure it'll taste just as good as any other bread pudding. The funny thing is I kind of sympathize with Luke here, because this is a frustrating situation. But it's just kind of funny to see him getting kind of comeuppance, sort of, a little bit. I'll even buy you the entire tray. How does that sound? That's not what you said before. Well, sweetheart, adults change their minds sometimes. You said if I come with you, you'll buy me a bread pudding, and I did, and now you won't keep your promise. That's a twist. Why did he want her to come with him? What the hell is this all about? I want to go home. I miss my mom. No, darling, if I remember correctly, and I have a good memory, honey. <laughs> what I said was, if you come quietly with me, I might buy you one. The quiet part didn't happen. Though, now that I'm sober, I think this is a bad idea. I should just ship you someplace else for that peace and quiet. This is such an unhealthy relationship. Now that I'm sober, oh my god, in front of this like seven year old kid? God damn. Oh, that's it. No hesitation. In a few paces, he's within my reach, and without warning, we're just hitting him? I'm slamming the flat area of the book against his skull. And we still go to his party? What? <laughs> I, I thought it would be a choice. Like, hey player, do you remember the relationship here? But nope, we're just beating him with a heavy object. Isabella couldn't go through with it, but we can. There's a cry of pain, followed by him instantly crouching down, hands nursing the sore spot. You know, I, I was wondering at the beginning of this scene, you have to go through like 30 minutes of security to get to his house, but now he's just out shopping at some cafe by himself, and some random citizen can walk up to him and hit him with something? That's a little odd. Almost comically, if this were a different situation and the safety of a St. Goretti student isn't at stake, I'd probably feel sorry for him. I mean, has anyone seen how thick this book is? Marianne has. Get behind me, Kylie. <gasps> Miss Pink! It's amusing how fast her expression changes from the pouty one earlier to something that of utter delight upon seeing me. 
but there's no time for any pleasantries, not even quick ones, because soon the man straightens and I'm readying my favorite newfound weapon for another hit. Maybe that's it. Maybe he'll forgive me the hit if he'll let me get Kylie the hell away from him. <laughs> Which is funny because I think that, you know, we're perceiving it as the opposite. <laughs> Except this time, he's ready, and before I can land another one, his hand shoots up to catch my wrist in a firm hold. And the look on his face... Bloody hell, woman! What's your problem? To say he's pissed would be a complete understatement. I mean, duh! Had I been the weak-willed sword, I'd probably cower under the sharp gaze. But that simply isn't how I roll. If he thinks he could scare me and do as he pleases here, just because I'm a woman or whatever his reasons may be, he's got another thing coming for him. So instead, I return it to him with the same intensity, with the same venom. What's my problem? You're the one who has a problem here. Rotten bow bags like you don't deserve the freedom to run this town. What are you doing to this girl? And why is that any of your business, pray tell? Again, because Becca doesn't know the situation, that answer sounds very dodgy, but it's really not. <laughs> oh, it's my business if I make it to be. Now, release me or I'll call the police! Oh, you think that scares me, Daisy? Kidnapper? <laughs> we just changed his name from Suspicious Man to Kidnapper. I have a name, you sleazy douchebag! Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> sleazy douche, we are just going through the names here. His grip on my hand only tightens when I attempt to shake it off. His tone may be dripping with anger and sarcasm, but the gleam in his eyes says it all. He's getting a kick out of this. Eh, I can buy it. Riling people up, getting on their nerves, invading their personal space? Yes. He knows exactly what and which buttons to push. The nerve of this person. The nerve of this arsehole. If he thinks I'm going to give in to his goading, please, he might as well just kiss his sorry behind. In fact, why not do the most sensible thing right now? Teach him a tough lesson. This could go a couple of ways. Shouting for help was going to be awkward and embarrassing because even Kylie knows that nobody needs help. We did admittedly bring this situation on ourselves. Hit him where it hurts? That'll have repercussions. I'll try- I just say it for a reason. I'll try this. Mister, you have until the count of five to let me go and step out of my personal space. I wonder if this will cost us points. Oh, that costs us a lot. <laughs> you know... I'm gonna reload, but let's just let's just see this play out. A fair warning. Fairer than any I can offer for people of his kind, and I'm already being considerate. Hell, this RSL doesn't even deserve a warning. If he doesn't listen, well, he's as much responsible for what hell happened next as anyone. Or else what? Such vulgar words coming out of that pretty mouth. A gorgeous flower like you shouldn't even be saying. Don't say I didn't warn you, Bowbag. Hmm? Mmm, love of that intensity, Daisy. Dude, look at our clothes. They ain't daisies. FYI, I like feisty in a woman. It gives them this certain... charm. Why don't you... Five. A second of silence? Oh! Then without any preamble, my leg moves in one fluid motion and delivers a swift, powerful, well-placed kick to his nether regions. Damn. <laughs> Needless to say, the effect is instantaneous. He yelps, abruptly drops his hold on me, and kneels over, howling from the pain. And we're still going to his party? <laughs> I can see tears forming at the corners of his eyes, too, though the mere sight of it prompts not an ounce of remorse from me. I would have been gentler if he weren't such a dirty little prick with an ego too big for his head. Too bad. Whether this obliterates any chance of him ever procreating remains to be known, but a part of me is already praying he doesn't ever breed after this. Well, don't worry, he didn't have plans to. We have no need of more of him in this world. You, you mad woman! And Kylie's like, uh... <laughs> I warned you, you ass. Why, you... This is harassment, I'm telling you! Harassment! Then why don't you tell that to the police once they get here, hmm? You despicable! Whatever you're assuming I am, I'll have you know it's all in your head. None of it's true. Well, relating to Kylie, yeah, but otherwise, no, we're probably right. You best have that pretty brain of yours checked before that gets worse. I'm amazed he's able to talk right now, honestly. If you get hit that hard, unexpectedly there, you're out. <laughs> like, it's over. What is wrong with you? Is this the face of someone who'd do anything suspicious? Dude. Oh? 
You don't think a stranger luring an innocent child with promises of sweets before whisking them away from their parents doesn't warrant any suspicion? Uh, again, I'm still going to reload. I just really want to see this play out. You have a very funny definition of suspicious, asshole. Maybe you're the one who should have that head of yours checked. The kid asked me to buy her sweets. You're the one who's suspicious here. I'll have you know, I have a wife. And he does too. <laughs> that much at least appears to have a sliver of truth to it. He even makes a show of brandishing his left hand on my face with much flourish. Brandish and flourish, look at that. Sure enough, a wedding ring is there, though all that earned him is an unimpressed glare from me. Immediately, a small part of me starts to feel sorry for whoever, whatever, poor woman married this sod. I don't understand why he has to bring her up, either, as if the mention of her alone will magically present a solution to his problem. Yeah, aren't you off? I mean, he says he's off for business all the time, and maybe he is, but... Isn't he a cheater? <laughs> she must truly be a remarkable woman if she can handle a dirtbag like him. And even my wife, my wife of all people in this bloody city, has never... Never, I'm telling you, <laughs> accused me of such a scandalous thing, you crazy woman! <sighs> it's great, because Luke is probably my least favorite character in this game, but his voice actor is probably my favorite. <laughs> Married or not, you're still a sleaze. Honestly, I feel... Miss Pink, why are you fighting with my teal? Yeah, there we go, there we go. Whatever words still have to be said here dies on my tongue. The same thing goes with a sleaze. Beside us stands Kylie, gawking at us with that same curious stare she often brings with her. Awkward! Anyway, I'm going to reload now. As fun as that was. <laughs> Shout for help, I guess. Let me go, you uncouth lout! Are... what? Nobody talks like that. It reminds me of South Park, when they arrest... or not arrested, when somebody, like, manhandled the, the guy who contributes to the dictionary word definitions. Unhand me, you obdurate beast! Or else what? I'll scream. <laughs> he laughs, a derisive thing that rankles on my temper more than it has any right to. It's as if he knows I can't do anything, or he's above any authority that exists in this city, confident he can get away with anything. Eh. The gall of this man. I'd like to punch him right now if I can. <laughs> nice try, lady. Why don't you drop the book first? You could kill people with that, you know. Fat chance. Oh no, that attitude won't do, Daisy. Here, let's try that again, like the proper adults we both are. Drop the bloody fucking book. Kylie is still standing right here. And then what? If you're assuming I'm... Then we'll have a nice conversation over a cuppa. Establish why you're attacking a poor, innocent stranger with a deadly weapon. Knowledge is power, and I have the most power of all. And maybe weave in an apology or two for the offended party afterwards. Can you imagine having an uncle like this? I'm the offended party here, by the way. My brain hasn't returned to its rightful place yet, in case you're wondering. Innocent! Don't play dumb! I heard what you were trying to do with that girl. Just because she isn't my student yet, doesn't mean I don't have a role in protecting that child's innocence. Protecting the what of who? Why would you- Oh no. In the span of a second, the expression on his face changes faster than anyone is capable of. From pure confusion to sudden realization before finally deciding on a face of utter mortification. He's quick to drop his hold on my hand afterwards, like he's been holding a piping hot object and has just realized it's in his hands all along. He's far from a decent person, but he actually might make good money doing comedy. The look on his face when he starts babbling his excuses is almost priceless. Yeah, yeah, minus no matter what, we attacked the guy, but at least we did take a double hit, right? No, 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 this kid's... All right, lady, look, it's all a misunderstanding. My tone can't go any flatter than the one I have now. Right. Yeah, it can go flatter. Right. He places a hand on my mouth before I spill the rest of it, and all at once I'm caught between trying to stop him from smothering me and keeping his dirty hands off me. But even as my nails dig deeper into his wrists, he doesn't appear to have any intention of letting me go. Being loud works, however. Soon the attention of practically every customer seated in the small establishment is on us. Oh man. <laughs> I shoot each of them an imploring look, hoping one of them will have the sense to help. The sleaze, however, is fast enough to flash them all an embarrassed smile. 
This lady's having such a bad day. Poor girl's just been through so much today. He's not wrong. Nothing to see here. Go on with your dinner. That played it off, though? Really? Bad day. Even if this were a friendly chat, I won't even touch you with a ten-foot pole, much less share any of prop any of problems. Much less share any of my problems with you, Blighter. You're my problem. I want to blurt it out, but with the hand covering my mouth and my lungs rapidly losing air, I bite down on his hand. Hard. It works. Ow. He yells, jerks his hand away from my face. So no matter what situation we choose, we're injuring him twice. Stepping back to put as much distance as he can between us while nursing his injured hand against his chest and muttering a string of very creative, of a very creative, set of expletives in front of Kylie. Tears have formed at the corners of his eyes from the pain. Again, jeez! And a small laughter almost leaves me. To be frank, he gives the impression of a kicked puppy with the glare he shoots me. A puppy I'm less inclined to feel sorry about. You, you mad woman! And we're back to this. I warned you, you ass. Why, you... This is harassment, I'm telling you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Then why don't you tell that to the public? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Just uh -huh. you're assuming I am. Mm -hmm. You best have that pretty brain okay. as check, but what is wrong with you? It's just the yeah. You yeah. don't think us. You have a very funny definition mm -hmm. of sus. The kid asked me to buy mm -hmm. us. I'll have you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. And even my... My wife! I love this guy. Why are you fighting with my teal? And here we go. Whatever words still left to be said here die on my tongue. The same thing goes to the sleaze. Beside us stands Kylie, gawking at us with that same curious stare she often brings with her. I know that look all too well, a precocious child through and through. She doesn't say anything further, her gaze simply moves between us, eyeing us both carefully, clearly anticipating an answer. From my experience, when it gets like this with children her age, it's a sure sign they won't leave you, until you've given them an answer they're satisfied with. Lying won't do either, it is dissolved into a shouting match for heaven's sake. And did she just say Teal? Something falls straight to the pit of my stomach at that. Yup. Which means that Rowan, our student that we currently have, is related to Luke as well. But my tone is gentle when I finally address her, void of any apprehension in what might be the first hints of embarrassment. I pointedly ignore the latter. It can very well be just the hunger speaking. Kylie, sweetie, do you know this, this, this oaf? Yeah, he's Tio Luke. Oh boy. Right at the moment, my brain stops. Every line of thought, every argument I still have against the man beside me dissipates in a haze. Amidst all of it, one memory gets triggered from a few days ago. T Tio? The... the one you mentioned before? The uncle? The guy Rowan wanted to impress? Or, or was that a dare? I'm sorry, I can't recall. Is it the one who promised he'll take Big Brother someplace cool? Yeah, the one in the same! Don't you know who he is? I sure as hell don't, darling. Because if I do, I wouldn't have let everything I've said earlier come out of my mouth. He's my T.O. Luke! The zillionaire extraordinaire and my... No. The fairy godfather! Oh. Oh. You're... He's your godfather. That's... That's nice. Ooh, man. The one and only. Did I get that right, T.O.? More than right, sweetheart. Still sleazy douche. I'm sure Miss Pink here understood everything you said quite perfectly. Miss Pink. Whatever it is that landed at the bottom of my stomach prior has shot straight up to my face and stayed there. The heat from it slowly spreading to my cheeks, coloring my face in almost the same shade as my hair. If only the earth would swallow me whole here and now. His eyes are on me. I could feel them, jeering, mocking. I can't even bring myself... Look at him? C come on. I can't even bring myself to look at him. What's in there? Amusement? I doubt it. He's probably having the time of his life right now. But I know, I can hear the sneer in his tone alone when he talks. He has that smug grin on him, which I may or may not want to punch off his face at present just for the hell of it. But damage control. I need to do some damage control before this whole thing goes south. That is correct. Apologize. Ooh. Definitely Kylie first, but... Well, we'll see what this goes. Oh, damn it. I should just suck it up. This sucks. 
Whoa, that took us a long way. Okay. Though it pains me to apologize to a sleazebag like him, this is my mistake. Yeah, we did just assault him completely, seemingly out of nowhere. With Kylie watching us close by, I don't want to set a bad example for her, do I? Also a good point. Ow. I'm surprised she grew up the child she is. If anything, I want to be the role model this man couldn't possibly become... from? For her. Even if it means taking a few blows to my ego and stroking his insufferable one. A deep gulp of air, a short moment to swallow my self-respect, and then I'm facing him. The words are out of my mouth in a single breath, I'll bet they are. I'm really, really sorry, sir. <laughs> the bigger person, yeah, yeah. I did not, I had no idea. His smirk is impossible to miss. He's not making an effort to hide it, and even the smile is so, so irritatingly present in his tone. If I could slap it off him, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Now, now, it's an honest mistake, Daisy. No, I really mean it. I actually thought you were... And then... It's fine now. It probably happens quite a lot to a few people who look suspicious to you. <laughs> Ooh. Seems I'm one of them now. But don't lose sleep over it. Do be careful with that book, though. A little more and you would have dislodged my poor brain off my head. What would I ever do if that happens? Oh, no! Did it leave a mark or anything? If you want, we can have it checked. I'll handle the expenses if there's a need for it. Ooh, that will not be necessary. Now, what kind of man would I be if I let an attractive woman such as yourself do that? <laughs> Why don't we just look at it this way? My forgiveness is coming from the utter goodness <laughs> of my heart. This guy is insufferable. So full of himself. Exactly the kind of person I'll happily leave to die in a ditch somewhere. Of course, sir. Why didn't I think of it that way? I know, right? <laughs> God damn, this is unbelievable. But even someone as capable as you is bound to have a few lapses. No harm done, Daisy. Let's move on from this. You know, honestly, I do have to admit, as much of a prick as Luke is, he could have very easily taken this higher. Like, I, I guess he's not that petty. He's just more interested in what amuses him. Well, if you're going to put it like that, then I guess there's nothing left for us to talk about. If I babysit Kylie, he'll probably be my best friend right now. <laughs> I figured as much. Awkward. The whole exchange is nothing but an awkward display of fake pleasantries. Yeah. One that brings much agony to the very pride I've willingly held back a while ago. I might need a drink later so I can forget any of this ever happened. Just don't drink in this cafe. We've seen what happens when you're near Luke when that happens. Who would have thought the time would come when I'd meet someone tougher to handle than Isabella? Miracles of miracles, I swear. Though, to my surprise, he prefers me a hand shortly before they leave. For a shake, I realize, after a long minute of staring at it. I accept it, I'll beat half-heartedly. But all the goodwill the small gesture represents melts into thin air when he winks at me. Yep. Winks. The gall of this man. However, there's no moment to ponder about it. Seconds later, the guy at the counter waves me over and hands me a paper bag as soon as I've paid. And I run the hell out of there. He offers me another smile before I leave. Normally I return it simply for the sake of returning it, or I don't at all, with the latter happening more commonly. For the time being, I do so freely. After that encounter and the scene we've caused, seeing a friendly gesture being extended to me, I'll beat from a person I barely know on a personal level. It feels like a reassurance, despite bearing no promise of better days. I take what little I can of it with me as I step out into the night, and we'll just have to settle for the fact that kicking Luke in the balls was an alternate timeline. As satisfying as that was. I genuinely wonder if the apology would have negated kicking him there. Because it gave us a lot of positive meter. That would have been fun if we just kick him in the dick and get away with it. Oh well. That sure was an adventure. A cloudless night sky greets me when I walk out of the cafe. Beyond the tall buildings, a blanket of stars spreads out before me. And now, even though we've had longer installments before... That just felt long. It is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? You know, did I say something about a previous installment being mostly awkward encounters? Because, whoa, boy, that, that, that is nothing compared to what happened this time around. 
And Luke is just so slimy in this one. I can't believe the stuff he got away with right in front of this little girl. He tried censoring himself before we got involved, but after that, he starts being creepy, hating on us, doing the sleazy thing. Like, this guy is unbelievable. At least our encounter with him ended... I'm not going to say pleasantly enough, it ended with a positive enough result in our relationship meter, I guess. Man, I don't even know if I want a positive relationship with him, That, like, even as far as video game statistics are concerned. But that encounter is over! We're going to his house later, we know that's coming, but at least we don't have to right now. Until next time, everyone.